good on you. That one's good. Is everyone mic'd up? We all good to go? Yeah. All right, good to go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, standing with me today, I have Colonel Ebert, uh, Deputy Chiefs of uh, the New Orleans Police Department, Fire Chief Tim McConnell, Dr. Emily Nichols, the Director of EMS, as well as our Criminal Justice Commissioner, Ms. Tanisha Stevens, who is here on behalf of the mayor who's out of town this afternoon. Uh, thank everyone for being here with me today because this is in, uh, indeed a team uh, effort today uh, with regards to what we dealt with since the beginning of this uh, investigation. The mayor and I have remained in constant contact regarding this investigation every step of the week. And she has been informed of my decision and has expressed her support. We are here today to announce the results of our months long investigation into the Unity One incident that occurred near the intersection of Broad and Washington Avenue on March 20th of this year. When six New Orleans Police Department officers initiated a traffic stop of a stolen vehicle, the vehicle disregarded the officer's signal to stop and then fled the officers, or fled from the officers. In response to the officers disregarded the NOPD policy and pursued the vehicle, deactivating their in-car camera systems as they did so. The driver of the stolen vehicle lost control near the intersection of Broad and Washington, causing the vehicle to collide with several parked vehicles before crashing into a tree and into the side of the Unity One Saloon building killing the driver and passenger, as well as one of uh, the individuals who was inside of the business at that time. Immediately, the members of the New Orleans Public Integrity Bureau Force Investigation Team launched an internal investigation where we learned the officers did not activate their body-worn cameras until the pursuit was over and the crash had occurred, which is a policy violation. We were also told on scene initially that the officers disengaged from the pursuit prior to the crash and were not pursuing the vehicle at that time. However, we soon learned that that was not the case. And in fact, the officers, the, the police units did not disengage from the pursuit and failed to give a clear indication as to why they violated our department's policy. After reviewing video from multiple locations, in a review of additional evidence presented at the time, it was determined multiple policy violations may have occurred. The officers involved were taken off of street duty and placed in limited administrative positions pending the outcome of the force investigation team's investigation. As the investigation progressed, FIT learned these officers had been involved in other unauthorized pursuits, violating again NOPD policy during a three-week three period leading up to the Unity One incident. Investigation, investigators initiated a new formal disciplinary investigation, expanding the scope of the initial investigation, including a department-wide review of possible pursuit incidents. By mid-May, investigators completed the administrative investigation into the initial unauthorized pursuit and crash at Unity One. And in June, investigators completed the administrative investigation into the other unauthorized pursuits, which were uncovered during the initial investigation. During this entire process, both investigations were meticulously reviewed by the New Orleans Police Department and our partners, including the independent police monitor, to ensure we were thorough and objective. Disciplinary hearings took place yesterday, Tuesday, the 16th, for both investigations. And today, I received the disciplinary reviews, the disciplinary review board's recommendation. And after review, I have agreed with their recommendation. Effective today, the following officers are no longer employed by the New Orleans Police Department. Uh, Mr. Alex Mickelson, Mr. Jonathan Broom, Mr. Jeffrey Harrington and Mr. Alex Florian. The two additional officers involved, William Harry received a 54-day suspension, and Officer Kobe Stewart 
received a 44-day suspension. Following today's decision, this case will now go before our Use of Force Review Board as standard protocol, where the incident will be, will be examined to determine whether any tactics, training, or policy changes are necessary. Since becoming Chief of Police, I have been committed to holding ourselves accountable and ensuring transparency. Today's results is the latest example of how we at the New Orleans Police Department are able to police ourselves in such cases. This department has shown again and again that it is not afraid to take action when it is warranted. There are reasons why certain protocols are in place, and this is a painful reminder why they must remain in place. On behalf of the mayor and everyone here standing with me today, we want to once again extend our heartfelt condolences to the family of 14-year-old Chimmy Lou Collins, 16-year-old Byron Wilson, and 54-year-old Shawan Abair. We know this has not been easy, and all of you continue to be in our thoughts and our prayers. At this time, I will take any questions. These were six district uh, task forces? Six districts, all officers involved with six district task force officers. And then in the prior chases that y'all investigated with them. Were all six of them in those incidents as well? In some, it, 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 there were different intervals. Some may have been involved in all of them. Then there were some who were not involved in all of them. How many were there? So far, we discovered three. Three including this one? Four including this one. Three outside of this one. Over what time frame? Three weeks prior to the uh, Unity One incident. So why were they doing these? Did they know the policy? Could they recite the policy? I can't tell you what they could recite, but I can say that they should have known the policy because this has been our standard policy uh, for, for some time now. Have they been fired for the chase or for lying? For the chase? I mean, for the, I mean, this is just an unfortunate incident all the way around. Three lives were lost. Three lives were lost as a result of a violation of a policy, a poor decision that was made. And not just that poor decision that was made that night. Uh, through further investigation, poor decisions that had been made prior to that night. Will any criminal charges be filed against them? That's no, ma'am. Are these the same officers that helped rescue people from the building? I am not sure of that. I am not sure exactly uh, what officers were involved in that rescue at that time. Did they turn off their cameras also in those other incidents? Yes, yes, and that 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 gave us a uh, more of a, a a reason why we believe they had. A lot of culpability, and they're trying to de deceive or be deceitful for their actions. How did you learn about those other incidents? Through the follow-up investigation, we did a, a department-wide review of other uh, what we may have believed to be possibly uh, unauthorized pursuits, and we were able to determine that these pursuits were unauthorized. Did those result in any crashes as well, or none? None, none that we know were involved in uh, any crashes. WDSU, do you have a question? What are you telling your, your officers now? Obviously, they're seeing this play out, and if these officers turned off their cameras, and perhaps you know others are are concerned when they want to engage in a chase. What are you, what are you telling them? Is there something to learn from this incident? Well, let me say this: uh, from the time that this occurred, I sent a, a department-wide email out uh, explaining what our policy is and why it is in place, and I stand by that. Uh, this is, you know, we have policies and procedures for a certain reason, and to have lost a life, uh, three lives like this, it, it should definitely send a message to all of our officers that we take this very seriously. Knowing this, how do you rebuild that trust with the community? Because at that point, when we saw it all unfold, they kept saying, no, we saw them chasing, and they didn't believe what the NOPD was saying at that time. So what can you say to the community right now? So what I can say to the community right now is that I... I said those words that night, and me saying those words was I gave them the information that I received that night in an effort to be transparent, and I will always continue to be transparent, just as I am today. So I received those words, I, I received that information, I relayed that information, and I know now, as a result of this investigation, that that was not the case. But it is all meant, uh, my messages are always with the intent of being transparent. In, in terms of Chase policy. I know it's basically for property crime type stuff, like a stolen vehicle that's not permitted. Is yes. there ever a situation where a stolen vehicle would be permitted, and would that be anything a supervisor would approve, or is it always 
No, no, it, it's about uh, what we will. We do have a policy with regards to no pursuit with, like you say, property crimes. But for felony violent crimes, with the safety measures in place, a supervisor will authorize that pursuit. Couple more questions, then wrap it up again. Anybody else? What is your officer? Is, is this an effective policy? Have you tracked, you know, how many times you've had to pull off of chases and, and how those have resulted compared with prior to this policy? So that is a review that we're doing now to see how many times have we've actually had to. We, we've, we've actually putting something in place now, a policy in place, in which we can actually track how many times have we actually engaged because the message to my office is to continue to engage. Our, our job, our mission is to protect and serve our community. So we're going to actively engage, but we're going to do it in a safe manner. Now, that means that we're going to pursue, uh, if we're uh, interacting with an individual that is disregarding our signal, uh, disregarding our, our commands, and it is a property crime, we're going to follow our policy. How long were these officers with the force? So you have a range from, uh, I can give you the entire, each officer by name, or I can give you by range. Officer Mickelson uh, has two and a half years on the job. <coughs> Officer Broom had two, uh, two years, eight months. Harrington, two years, five months. Florian had three years, seven months. William Harry, two years, eight months. And Kobe Stewart, nine years, six months. And we have all this information one more question. In, in terms these of are cameras, all those were all meant to be a little to bring transparency to the NOPD. When you learned I'm sorry? The, the cameras were all meant to be bringing transparency to the NOPD. Our body one cam our body one cameras as well as our in call cameras, it is meant to bring transparency. I mean it when is you learned though that they were all turned off at some point. I mean that's gotta frustrate you as the superintendent. Absolutely. I and mean, that that is something we had to look into to see uh is was there a culture amongst the department department wide and we through further uh, review, we do not believe that that was a culture department-wide. This may have been something that this particular unit was involved in, but this was definitely not a culture amongst the department in its entirety. You said safety measures in place during those felony <coughs> pursuits, if necessary. What kind of safety measures do you implement when you decide that you need to chase a suspect? There's a protocol that we will, we will follow. The supervisor is going to ask various, que various questions. Uh, pedestrian traffic, vehicular traffic, uh, kids, uh, what time of day is it, the kids getting out of school, things of that nature to make sure we're not jeopardizing the uh, safety of the public. Sean, one last question. Yeah, just one last question. Now we know that the consent decree was violated by these officers. Uh, it kind of changes some things. Uh, it does Are you guys fielding any lawsuits right now? Does this take a, a different step here as far as uh, the people that were involved, the people that were killed, the people that were injured, are you are you hearing from them or their attorneys? Is the NOPD you know, hearing from them or their attorneys? So I can't say anything about any litigation right now because I really do not know, but I will say this. They did not violate consent decree. They, they violated the New Orleans Police Department's policies and procedures. It is not the consent decree's policy and procedures. It is the New Orleans Police Department's policies and procedures. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>